In a previous video, we looked at all the amazing things that can happen to the body when we switch to a whole food plant-based diet. From the reversal of type 2 diabetes, reduction in cholesterol, high blood pressure and inflammation, and eventually even the unclogging of arteries, to name just a few. However, it feels like every day we hear another ex-vegan story, where people have given up on a 100% plant-based diet, with some stating they have less energy, lack of focus, and or digestive issues. Now, a whole food vegan diet does take some careful planning to make sure we're getting everything we need, and you may have seen on this channel, I'm making more videos on nutrients like zinc, calcium, iodine, etc. To highlight the importance of ensuring we don't become deficient in certain key nutrients. So in this video, we're going to hear from three leading plant-based medical doctors, Dr. Michael Clapper, Dr. Joel Furman, and Dr. Michael Greger, on some of the reasons people can fail on a whole food plant-based diet, and how to fix it. I think a significant amount of vegans who have come to me over the years to die, doc, man, I, I felt great when I first been on this way to eat, but it's been three years now, and man, I don't have the energy. I'm dragging it, man. And what's turning out when you go over their diet, there's been very little iodine in their diet, and what they're looking at is subclinical hypothyroidism. You know, these folks have low thyroid function from iodine deficiency, and I think it's one of the really common causes of vegans failing to thrive. There's meta-analysis and studies showing that a lot of vegans have a higher risk of depression, and we're seeing that, especially on these low-fat vegan diets, because the brain isn't getting enough fat, and a lot of these people recommending the low-fat vegan diets are also not recommending people take DHA to not supplying in their diet because they're assuming that the body's going to make enough from the little bit of fats they're consuming. And my 25 years of experience with tens of thousands of people on vegan diets, and many of which come to me because they get in trouble, it most often gets down to depression or some problem with fatty acids. You know, there's other things. Some people we do require more protein. Some people are poor assimilators of certain nutrients that require some tweaking of their diets. And some people, as they get older, their ability to assimilate protein goes down. They need to modify their vegan diet to include more of the high-protein plant foods like hemp seeds and pine nuts and black beans and tempeh. So in other words, there's some modification that needs to be made because of their individual um, differences. But the point I'm making right now is depression and dementia are potential risks for people on these extremely low-fat vegan diets and thinking fat is the enemy. When people come to my door as kind of vegans failing to thrive, right, people that just, I mean, most people, you know, start eating plant-based, start eating healthy, feel great energy off the chart, you know, all the good things we would hope. Their blood levels are great. Okay. Some people don't thrive, don't do well, and, um, you know, end up going to somebody like me that, you know, sees a lot of these people in my practice. One of the first things that I do is I'll, I'll try carnitine. The reason carnitine is in meat is because animals make it. We are animals and we make it too. There's enzyme systems that actually create carnitine in our body, and people have different abilities to create it. And about one in uh, 10, 20, 30,000 births, so someone actually has a, a deficiency um, in creating carnitine, can't create carnitine, and would never even know it if they ate meat. Because they eat meat their whole lives, they're just getting carnitine this way instead of their own body making it, and then should they go vegetarian, they get up in the hospital. Now, so what do they do? They take carnitine supplements and they're fine. I mean, they could stay vegetarian, they'll go back to meat, whatever. But as long as they're getting carnitine, so most people, the vast majority of people, should be able to make all the carnitine they need, but... You know, we're all different. We, you know, all of our enzyme systems are, are a little different. And so, you know, we may need to tweak the diet. I see a lot of vitamin D deficiency. People think, oh, there's vitamin D, you know, add to the milk supply. There's vitamin D. But there's so little, you really have to, uh, you really have to be out in the sun. Um, or if you're unable to, um, uh, to uh, make sure you're supplementing with enough uh, vitamin D. Uh, I'll check a long chain to make three fatty acid levels. Now, your body should be able to take the short chain omega threes found in walnuts and uh, dark green leafy vegetables and flax seeds and chia seeds and hemp seeds, and, you know, the alpha linolenic acid, and extend it has this, you know, delta 60 saturated enzyme that elongates it into the so-called fish fats, the DHA, the EPA. The question is, can it do it enough for optimal health? Particularly if you're, uh, uh, you know, a woman creating a new brain in their uh, uterus, um, is there going to be enough? 
Um, and so should um, vegans be supplemented with preformed EPA DHA, like an algae derived DHA. And so, you know, not worry how good their enzymes are or their flaxseed intake and take it in directly. So it's about a third of the weight, third of the, the dry weight of the brain is DHA. When people call you a fat head, it's kind of true in a sense. Um, and so we need to have these, these are essential fatty acids. We sh again, we should be able to elongate all we want, but there are some people that, uh, for whatever reason, whether they're eating trans fats or they're diabetic, some other reasons, they're just not as good at this conversion. Um, and I see them, I put them on long chain omega threes, and they do better. We're seeing some problems uh, in long term. Uh, people who are eating plant-based diets in the long term, some older men who are not getting enough omega-3s. And so for two years now, I've recommended that uh, people may want to take a, a supplement of a long-chain omega-3, so a DHA and or EPA supplement. These are um, algae-based, so the same place the fish get them from. Fish, these are essential fats. Fish don't make them. We don't make them. Come from the bottom of the food chain. We can cut out the middle fish and not get all the, the pollutants that build up in fish by going straight to the source. We make them in these stainless steel tanks, and so we don't have to worry about contaminants. We don't have to worry about foodborne illness, etc. And we may be able to make all the long chains we need, but unfortunately, there's no kind of lab test that can tell us that. So, for particularly plant-based, uh, pregnant and breastfeeding women, in fact, a few months before pregnancy, I would um, start supplementing with uh, DHA. And in fact, it may be a good idea for everyone to get maybe 250 to uh, 300 uh, milligrams of, uh, of those long chains, DHA, EPA, every day or a few days a week. Uh, it's, it's unclear. We don't have uh, good science either way, but uh, that's probably, that's, that's where my recommendation based on kind of limited evidence. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.